Do you guys want to help me get ready for our science lesson tomorrow? Yeah. We need to get all the supplies together. Okay. The first thing we need to do is bring these seashells downstairs. Because we're going to use real shells. Those shells, let's see those shells. Those shells are from... The beach. California, Florida, where else? Um, is that it? Yeah. That might be it. So the first thing that I do is I get all the supplies ready um, and pulled out from our bin for the um, science lesson we're gonna be doing the night before. So we just finished our school day today and so I'm just grabbing this stuff out. So you guys saw we got the shells. So I'm gonna go through our um, supplies and get that all together. The preparation up here I've already done. I do that at the beginning of the unit. So that way tomorrow we're all ready to go with our uh, second lesson here in the marine biology unit which we're gonna show you guys. Um, you guys always love the do a lesson with us videos. So that's what we're gonna be doing tomorrow, learning about tides and intertidal zones and demonstrating that. I am approaching this unit a little bit different than I have units in the past because this is just super deep and complex and I'm not interested in rushing it. So um, we've been kind of dedicating like half of a day to these lessons and I'm not stressed about it. We're taking a lot of time on it and so far so good. So I'm gonna collect the rest of the supplies the night before so that way they're all ready to go and then we'll pick up with you guys tomorrow um, when we start this lesson. So as you guys can see, we've got all of our little supplies here. So I just am gonna leave this on the counter. Um, the I bought this sand when we went back to school shopping, but um, it wasn't gonna be enough. So I ordered some off of Amazon. This is actually if you had like a hermit crab for a pet, um, but it was only like five bucks. So got this all ready to go in our lesson. And so tomorrow we'll be ready to do our science unit. Right. So usually we would do our science lesson at our table over here, but we are having a poetry tea time um, this afternoon with some of our friends. So that is all set up. So what I've done here is clear off my kitchen bar counter of all of our decor and things like that. And we are all positioned around them. So, or around the bar. So what I do is I have them take out the sheet um, that we're gonna be using this lesson so that way they have it out and um, we bring down our pencils and all of our supplies so they all have their sheets out and they're ready to learn right Landon yeah and over there so I'm just gonna really sit over here on this little step stool and just kind of sit right here and share um, the information with all of you this quote and then we're gonna discuss what it means the sea, once, once it casts its spell, it holds one in its net of wonder forever. And that was said by Jacques Yves Cousteau. What do you think that means? The, 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 the sea, once it casts its spell, it holds one in its net of wonder forever. What do you think that means? The tides. Um, maybe maybe because there's built in the ocean and the waves make it go farther or something like that good what do you think the tides the tide yeah what about it um when it goes you know at night how it goes all the way up the uh -huh. beach like that what do you think it means well that's the ocean super interesting well to me it is that if once you like start learning about it, can't stop. Good. I think that that definitely is what that. Oh was yeah, saying. yeah, that. Okay. Um, yeah, that, that. So in the Bible we read, and God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters, he called the seas, and God saw that it was good. That's in Genesis 1:10. A life on the ocean wave, a home on the rolling deep, where the scattered waters rave and the winds their revels keep. Like an eagle cage gun to frown, but with a stout vessel and crew will say, let the storm come down. And the song of our hearts shall be 
While the winds and the waters rave, a home on the rolling sea, a life on the ocean wave. So what do you guys think that means? Like how it's always changing, the tides, low tide, high tide. Yeah. And then it talks about a storm on a boat. Right, and it talks about the motion of the water in the ocean, right? Like the current right. crab, if you have the crab. Right, it's hermit, hermit crab sand. Hermit beach. So okay, mm -hmm. so what you're gonna do, Kylie, is you're not gonna fill the whole pan. You're only gonna fill it about over here. Yeah. And we're gonna fill it pretty much to the top, but only coming about here. So don't dump it over the whole thing. Okay. okay? Pour. You might not use the whole bag. That is such cool sand. Looks like. Should I cut open more than a this much? You can. Looks like a real sand. Wow, so the, yeah, make it flat. It so Pack wet? it down. Because they probably got it in the ocean. No, it's just the kind it is. So make it kind of level. Landon, don't do that yet. Okay, this you do that. Hey, mom, it looks like the drop in the ocean. Wow, you're ahead. You know what we're creating? That big drop. So the sand right here is the. So this sand. Hang on, Kylie. Don't make a mess. So this is the shore and the continental shelf of the ocean, okay? So you know how when we were on the beach, the sand, it kind of slopes down oh, into yeah. the water? Yeah. So that's what we just created. So if we were on the beach, our umbrella would be back here, and then this is where the waves would be washing up, but then you walk out on those waves, and then it gets deep, right? Yay. So that's called the continental shelf. Okay. Caleb, on the side of the corner over here, I want you to create a hole down in here, okay? Right in that corner. That's gonna be a tide pool, okay? And we're gonna surround it with rocks because tide pools, make it a little bit bigger, bud. Tide pools usually have rocks around them. Just like an aerial. Okay, Landon, so you're gonna put in two drops of the blue food coloring into that cup of water, okay? So twist off that lid. You have to take the lid off. Kylie, remember when we did this earlier, put two drops in there. Just two. Squeeze in two. One, one, two. Okay, good, set it to the side. You can leave the lid off, okay? Isn't it so we're gonna stir that water. We're gonna stir it up. No, we're gonna let them do that part. You use this, just stir it a little bit. Swirl it around. We have to do two waters, so you'll do the next one, okay? Oh, it's so mermaid water, oh, I love it. Okay, now Landon, you're gonna gently pour it into here. Don't pour it on the sand though, just pour it into our pan. Okay, that's good. I think I might need help with that. Okay, good mixing, Livy. Pour it in now. You can put that in the sink. Do it nice and slow like Landon did, okay? So it doesn't splash out. Okay, you can dump it. So who remembers where I said, if we were on the beach, where would we be sitting? Right, right, right here. here. Kylie, can you move your hand, please? Right We'd be up at the very top. So what we have going right now represents the shore at low tide. Do you guys remember low tide from the beach? But towards the afternoon when we were at the beach this summer, what would start to happen? It would get... It, the high tide would come and the water would come up higher on the sand and we would sometimes have to move farther back. Do you remember that? Yeah. And also, that's why when we went to the beach, we would see what on the sand? Seaweed. Seaweed. Seaweed, very, very high up. So this is low tide. So let's see what is gonna happen to the sand if we do high tide. It's gonna. How do you think we can create high tide in here? More water. More water, that's a good guess. But what do you actually think creates high tide in the ocean? Waves. Waves, bingo. So how? 
Shall we create waves in here? What could we do? Move your hand in it. Move it or use a cup. So we're gonna use a cup and make high tide. Good, so we're making the waves with the tide. And what are you guys noticing? It's collapsing. The sand yeah, is collapsed. starting to come down. It's, is it getting more wet? Yeah. Yeah. And what's happening in the tide pool? The water. The water, the water, the water is going in there. Good. Keep going. We've got 30, two more seconds for the waves. Mom. Oh. Mommy. Okay, oh, stop tide, making waves. Tide pool fell. Okay, so what do we notice about the sand? This part, it fell down. Right, more it's fell down. And, it, and it's the wet part where where the water reaches, kind of. Good. It looks like the water got higher. Yeah, you think it looks like the water moved. And all the stuff is going right there. Good. It looks like seaweed. So in our, in our science journals, we're going to label what we what we created here, okay? So you guys gotta go into your folders. Okay. So we're showing in our rectangle pan where the continental shelf was. So remember the continental shelf was the sand when it dropped off. So can you draw that, how it was? Good. And then where was I? I get asked a lot how doing lessons with multiple ages work. And for example, she is in seventh grade. So she um, is able to do things and work ahead a bit while my younger kiddos sometimes take a little bit longer to write down the information. But it's totally fine because we can always work on patience and waiting and she can you know, read and understand things a little bit more deeply. So that's how we do it. Um, but I don't view it as a bad thing at all. And you can see he's also working. Yeah, you can cut that out, just the animals. Don't cut the, the paper. He's in sixth grade this year, so he also is working a tiny bit ahead. So I always try to have something for them to do while they're waiting, whether that's looking through a book or working ahead a bit, whatever it might be. So that's just how we do it in our family. While you guys are cutting, I want you to listen to this next part, okay? Hey Kylie, can you pay attention? Yeah. Thank you. Twice each day, the ocean tides flood the shore. So twice a day, the ocean tide completely floods the shore. This happens when a bulge is created in the ocean because of the gravitational pull of the moon. The moon? The moon. The, gravitation of the, pull, the gravitational pull of the moon creates the bulge, which makes the tide in the ocean come completely over the shore twice each day. That's weird. Did you know that? No. 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 I thought ocean. So this, then the water on earth, okay, the water facing the moon. So we have quite a few new vocabulary words to add to our word wall today. So what I like to do with these is I like to say the word and then see if they know what it means. And if they do know what it means, then we just move on from that one. But if they don't, then we kind of discuss that. And I'm just following along um, with the lesson as it is planned. So I'm gonna read the definitions now. Okay, if you know what the word means, don't scream, okay. just just wait, and then I'll, then yep, raise your hand. Then I'll call on you, okay? High tide, Livy. Um, What's high, high tide? High tide is when the water reaches kind of all the way up. Good job! When the water reaches the highest point along the shore. And who, we learned today what causes that. Who can tell me what it causes Wait. it? Caleb, mm -hmm. the gravitational pull of the moon and the sun. Good job, so that's high tide. Okay, next one we have is a tide pool. Who can tell me what a tide pool is? So these shells that I've given to each of them are real shells. You can use fake shells, but we're using real ones. I don't know what this is called. 
what is that called? A sand dollar. Yes. And we've collected these from the beach, and so we're using our senses to smell them, touch them, look at them, observe them. This one smells so good. And so we've got some wow. interesting shells we've what? found over the years. I didn't found one that smells like lavender. Really? Use like your senses. What does that one smell like? Smells good. Yeah, smell smells like? good? Smell Let me it. smell Inside. it. Can I mm. smell it? Is that a clam head? Well, Daddy, can I smell it? If a clam was in there, I don't think it would smell that good. Uh -uh. Yeah. <laughs> Caleb! A river flows into the salt water of the ocean. Because it contains a mixture of fresh and salt water, it is called brackish water. Brackish. So that's what you call salt and fresh water when it mixes together, brackish water. There are three types of estuaries. Salt marshes are one of those. Okay guys, we're gonna do the sheet together. Okay. So we're gonna start in the with the hermit crab. Where does he go? Low tide. No. The high tide. The high tide in the what? Tide pool. The tide pool, uh -huh. which is up here. Right here. So the, where it says tide pool and high tide, that's where the hermit crab goes. Can you, Mom, can you get this thing off? Yes. Pass me the glue. Landon, that's why we're doing oh, it together. I glue on here. That's okay. No, we're, we're we're doing it together. So the hermit crab goes into the tide pool. Okay. The shark lives farther out than the low tide, but you can see on the top of your sheet that it says the sunlight zone. Remember we learned that 90% of all the animals in the ocean live in the sunlight zone? Yep, it's only 10%. Okay. So now we're moving down onto the side of the paper where we have the mesopelagic, which is the twilight zone. So remember we learned that there's only a couple of animals that live in that zone, and who thinks they know which one it is? Squidward. This one. Guys, Squidward. It's the, it's the squid. Squidward. Which one? So, which, which one? Caleb, show the camera your squid. Here, let it focus back up a little bit. Wait, this one? It's not focusing, but it's a creepy squid. Okay, so, yep, that one. He lives in, okay, thank you. Glue that on the next one. Twilight? Yep, because he lives in the twilight zone. Did you see the squid? Kylie? Yeah, I got squid. Okay. Wait, giant squid? No. no. The little guy. So we're all done with our sheet called the Oceanic Divisions, and we've placed the animals in the correct zones. And can I see yours, mister? Mine's a bit too gluey, but. A little gluey, okay. Good job. And then he has the colored one because I didn't make colored copies. And over here, we have this one. Good, so you guys are gonna put those all away in your science journals. Mine's too gluey. Okay, you can let it dry, yeah, but yeah. these are their science folders and we just keep everything in there. And that is a complete lesson of science. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing um, lesson number two in marine biology. We're learning a lot about the ocean. And Kylie, my oldest right here, along with her brother over here, who's in sixth grade, they are going to get the computer and they are going to do this, um, let me focus it for you guys. They are going to do the uh, lesson extension right here, learning more about the intertidal zones and then they're gonna explain that to us. So I probably won't film that because they're gonna get started on that and then we have guests coming over, um, but I do have them do the lesson extensions and then share that information. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing us make a fun um, <laughs> picture of what the ocean and the tide might look like. They're dying to play with it. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and seeing us do a lesson. Please give me a thumbs up before you go and I will see you guys in my next video really soon. Bye guys. Lesson extension working together.
eat each other. What are those fishies called? Angler fish. Angler fishes. So he was dying to get his Animal Planet toys out and play with the ocean we created. So who am I to say no?